So now as we continue our look at the neuron, which is the functional unit of the nervous system, we'll entitle the next flowchart Neuron 2. And again, as we're going through this, we should be looking at figure 48.2 to get a good visual understanding of these very characteristic structures that a neuron possesses. The next structure that we want to look at in the basic overall system, in the basic overall cell that would be a neuron, would be the cytoplasmic extensions, which is a group of structures actually. So the next characterization that neurons have, that are they are characterized by, are going to be called cyto plasmic extensions. I would say this is the most characteristic structure of a neuron. These are things that are going to protrude out of the neuron and that most other cells don't have. They don't have these cytoplasmic extensions to the uh, capacity that a neuron has. And thus, it's a very characteristic structure of the neuron that protrudes out of it. So let's take a look at some of these cytoplasmic extensions. The first one that we want to look at is called the dendrite. And dendrite, uh, which is a, a word that comes from the Greek word dendro, which refers to tree, um, this is going to be basically like a tree branch. Think of it as a tree branch. And tree branches are very much extended. They have a large surface area because they want to grab a lot of light. Dendrites are much the same way, but their function is not to grab light per se, but it's a little bit different here, but it will serve sort of the same idea here. The function of a dendrite is to receive information, to grab information. And so in order to grab information, as we're stating here, receive info from, let's say, the environment, or a different neuron from ENV or other neuron, you want to have the most possible uh, surface area or space, most possible extensions like this to grab as much information as you can so that you can take this information and not only receive it at an efficient and successful rate, but also send it. Dendrites will also function in sending the signal to the part that will be very much wanting that signal because that response to the signal can only happen at the cell body. Send signals to the cell body. Now why can the response happen here? The cell body, if you remember, contains the organelles and the organelles are going to do all of the work necessary to take this information and create a cellular response. Let's say you need to make more of a certain hormone, more of a certain compound. That can only happen if the information from the environment or the other neuron that is telling the other, this neuron in question right now, that can only happen if it takes this dendrite pathway from the dendrites to the cell body, as you can see in figure 48.2. So this whole idea here is basically to create an area at which an inf information can be received and then transferred to the main part of the neuron called the cell body. So that's a cytoplasmic extension. That's, I like to think of it as on the left side of the cell body. Now, if the cell body is on the middle, there's now going to be another side to the cell body on the right side of the cell body, which is typically referred to as a different extension now. And that extension is called the axon. And we'll do that one right over here. So this is a separate cell extension, cytoplasmic extension of a neuron, separate from the dendrites. This is going to usually be just one long axon, okay? Usually in a typical neuron, there is one long axon, okay? And the reason why it's one of them and long and a very long axon will be highlighted as we look at the function. Now, what's the purpose of an axon? An axon functions in the following manner. Its job is to transmit a neural impulse. So now we're using very, very nervous system language here. Transmit a neural impulse. Just a fancy way of saying push a message away from the cell body. Away from the cell body. So the cell body is that central region. Now we want to push it away from the central region toward or down, I should say, the axon. And that's going to be the major role of the axon is to provide a 
pathway at which this neural impulse, this neural message can be sent away from the cell body to, let's say, another dendrite. And you have to go from dendrite to cell body to axon. And then once you've traveled along this long axon, then you'll get to maybe the next neuron or you'll get to the next structure, whatever it may be. The whole purpose of this is to send information. Now, specifically when we're sending this information, it can either be sent to um, another neuron. So you can either send this information to another neuron or this information can be transmitted to an effector. Okay, this is a different term here to know, an effector. This is a big term in the nervous system when you're trying to understand it. An effector can be simply defined as the following. This is the part of an organism that produces a response to stimuli. That produces a response to stimuli. And remember, one of the big functions of the nervous system overall was to respond to stimuli. And how can you have a response to a stimuli or a stimulus? You have a message that travels down the axon away from the cell body to an effector. And the effector will get that message by being connected to the axon, the end of it, let's say, and then it will respond accordingly based off of whatever the message was. The reason why it's called an effector is because this structure that's receiving the information from the axon produces a quote-unquote effect, and thus the name effector. And usually an effector that's very common when we're talking about nervous system uh, would be things like muscles and glands. Glands will secrete. Muscles will move, let's say. Those are messages. Those messages only can happen if a certain message is received to these effectors and that message comes via traveling down an axon this long pathway from the cell body to an effector or another neuron if you want to continue this message even further in addition to this purpose here the axon will also contain a structure called the axon hillock and this is an important structure when we begin to talk about the action potential the axon hillock is the cone shaped base of the axon it's a cone-shaped base of the axon. Okay, big deal. What does this have to do with the overall axon function? Well, the reason why this is important is because the axon hillock is technically the region where the axon begins, where axon begins extending away from the cell body. This is the first point at which it starts to extend away from the cell body. Now again, why is it extending away from the cell body and not towards it, let's say? Well, that's because it's trying to transmit a neural impulse. It's trying to send a message somewhere else, whether it's an effector or another neuron, thus it has to go away from the cell body. And the first point at which it begins this traveling away from the cell body is called the axon hillock. In essence, the axon hillock therefore will serve as the locations where signals are first generated. Location where signals, a response, let's say, is first generated here. Location where signals will be generated. And once they're generated, they move down the axon to an effector or another neuron, whatever the situation may call for. And then, in addition to this axon hillock, which is sort of the beginning of the axon, the axon also has an end, a terminus, a terminal, which would mean the end of the axon. And that's going to be uh, over here, we'll highlight that. The end of the axon contains branches. Okay, The end of the axon contains these branches. And these branches are going to have tips on them. So the tips of these ending branches, these terminal branches, the tips of them are going to have very specific roles and a very specific name that's actually the entire next lecture, which is what it focuses on, called synaptic terminals. Terminals means end of, and this is going to be the beginning of a synapse. More on this in the next lecture on the nervous system, as we'll see. These tips uh, of these branches are actually located on the opposite end of the cell body. 
So the opposite end of cell body, all the way down from a cell body, all the way at the end of it. And that covers our look at the axon. Final thing I want to look at here is the idea of a nerve, okay? A nerve is a more broad structure than a neuron, and we'll see why in just a second. If a neuron has the basic functional unit and it contains things like a dendrite, which leads into a cell body, which then extends away into an axon, what is the nerve? The nerve is going to be the following. A nerve is comprised of axons of many neurons. It's comprised of axons of many neurons, not just one axon, therefore many neurons held together by connective tissue. So we're going to take a bunch of axons, wrap them around in connective tissue, thus we're taking a bunch of neurons and wrapping them around in connective tissue, we bundle them together and that bundle will comprise a nerve, okay? It will be a nerve with many axons, this many neurons, bundled together, wrapped in connective tissue. Therefore, what we can state is that this is a good way to make sure that many axons travel together, which is important because you want messages to travel in cohesion and in a very efficient manner, and that's what we're going to do here. Therefore, axons will travel together via this nerve structure um, to whatever part of the body they are needed, to whatever part of body. So you will have specific nerves that will innervate, that's the technical term here, um, all the way to let's say your foot and your goal is to kick a soccer ball. You're going to have a cohesive and very connective message sent all the way from your central nervous system all the way down to your foot via nerves, via axons, via dendrite cell bodies, all in a sort of goal of kicking that soccer ball. And that's the part of the body at which we're trying to get to. How do we get there? We use nerves and nerves send messages. Again, remember the overall idea behind the nervous system. To detect and respond to stimuli, the neuron does a great job of this because it can, con it can conduct messages, allow them to move through the neuron, and also integrate messages, as we'll see when we move forward in this lecture. So that covers our look at the neuron. I would really look at figure 48.2 to really drive home this point. Um, and now we're going to start looking at the actual function of the nervous system, specifically an idea and term called info processing.